Well, here we are in the orchard. It's early November, and you can see there the uh, orangey colour of the larch needles. Now, I planted um, some larch here. That's what we call the oval spinny just there. Uh, these trees here are the uh, Norway spruce, uh, various other trees we can see. But the orange ones in the middle are larch. And I planted larch for beauty, mainly. And the beauty is of the, uh, the early spring. I love to see it. I call it larch burst when I see the larch needles first come. The larch, of course, is uh, a deciduous conifer. And produces hardwood as well. It's a lovely tree, and I'm told uh, all the larch in uh, Europe are threatened to be wiped out by a fungal disease. I hope that's not true, but it may be. And in Wales, where we go regularly, we've seen large areas of larch which have died because of this wretched uh, disease, which apparently can't be stopped. So that's a tragedy. Uh, it's another reason why you should plant lots of different trees. Um, anyway, currently. Uh, the wind you can hear whispering no, over there is in that oak and in the uh, just shedding a few leaves now it's uh, middle of middle of November and lots of rustling from the oak and the hazel of which we have planted a great deal. I'm just going to take a look at the hazel around the corner. This is the um, the le um, this is a gate in the orchard. We've planted hedgerows and there's many plants in them as we can which bear fruit uh, that birds, berries that birds can enjoy eat during the year. Last time I was here I saw three deer uh, down that way and this is a lot of hazel that we planted. There are many reasons for growing hazel. One of them is it cheers you up a little in the winter um, when you start to see these um, hazel catkins appear and when they open up, you get these tiny little uh, beautiful red flowers uh, around about the middle of the winter. They're about one millimetre across, and you'll only ever see them if you're looking for them very carefully. Hazel, of course, has very many uses. Anyway, like a lot of people, I get pretty low in winter, and I, I find November a hard month to cope with. Uh, and getting outdoors is a great remedy. Vitamin D, whatever, a little bit of whiskey, not too much. Um, getting outdoors, uh, getting outdoors to do anything. Obviously, if you're outdoor work in a garden or an orchard or woodland, then that's helpful. Do it, share it with a friend, have a little fire or two. Um, there are some lovely sunsets uh, to be seen in November as well, uh, although not on a day like this with heavy leaden grey skies. Anyway, um, enough sort of background ambience. Uh, just, I didn't write as much as I did as I might have done in the book about the uh, woodland and hedgerow side of things. Uh, but anyway, one of the things to do in winter is removing trees that need removing, and I've just begun doing this. I'm in the oh, was a robin redbreast. I don't think you see him. Um, I'm in the uh, Cobbett's major section of the orchard. That's sort of from here to there, and from here to there. There are 12 rows of fruit trees here. This is row one, and we've decided to completely remove the whole of row one and the whole of row nine. There are sound reasons for doing that. Um, essentially, we are moving away from the idea of, uh, uh, of selling apples to make money. Uh, we do sell some apples. Uh, we don't make a lot of money from it. Uh, they go for cider. We give away a lot of fruit. Next year, we are determined to start our um, autumn apple sales again. Um, there'll be one or two one-off events and for those who live within an hour's drive say off and southern Hampshire they might be interested in details will go out but this row is uh, well there's one sunset at the top which I've just uh, removed most of and the rest of this row is winter king which has been a good apple for us um, but there are 30 trees in this row and we don't need them we don't use them we don't sell them uh, our friends don't want them for cider particularly and um, uh, we're going to uh, remove the whole of this row and what that will do is create a space here as you can see we've got a hedgerow here and it's quite a thick hedgerow it's an important wildlife preserve it's greatly increased the number of birds there are probably some snakes and uh, other interesting animals as well living in the shelter that this um, 
hedgerow has made. It has a, a lot of natural beauty to it. Um, it's a windbreak. Uh, it produces lots of leaf mould as well, uh, as I've already mentioned in this uh, video. There are lots of berries here that feed wild birds. So the hedgerow is very important, uh, but this row, you can see, uh, this row of food is a little bit close. We don't need this, but we could do a more car parking space. We had uh, some friends out at the orchard uh, with a couple of it, with three events this year where we had friends out here. One of them was quite a large event. We had, oh, I'm not sure how many people, 150 or so people. It was a special wedding anniversary thing uh, with some overseas guests. And we had difficulty finding enough car parking space. So we think, well, we don't need this row of apples, but if we take this row out, then we can do a lot of car parking here. And if we then, at the far end of this orchard, we can take a row, the, the, the row nearest, uh, a row parallel to the, um, the pit poplars at the end of this orchard, and that's one tree of each of several varieties, so we're no worse off. We haven't lost a single variety. And row nine, further down that way, I'm not going to walk there for now, uh, row nine, uh, that is a mixture of uh, Orleans Renat and... Um, um, Stone of Pippin. Good apples, but we've got a good deal of them elsewhere in the orchard. So we'll take those two rows clean out and that will create a lot more air space, a lot more a driveway parking space, it'll give the other trees more room um, and it's going to give us a lot of firewood. Anyway, what I'm doing, this is, uh, uh, you know, I like to wear these gloves, these are nice gloves by the way, um, nice long gloves, gauntlets that protect my hands, uh, what is the make of these briars. Um, they were they weren't, were not particularly cheap, but they're you know, better than cuts. There's the good old um, Silky Fox 300mm um, Gomtaro saw, uh, which is seriously good. It goes through, I'm not going to do a sawing video here. Um, but what I've done, this is the tree that's coming out. It's always sad to see a tree come out, but this tree is, um, you know, 23, 24 years old. It's way more than, you know, a number of times paid for itself. Um, it's beginning to get post mature and it's a variety sunset, we, we don't need it, uh, this one, we're going to get more out. What I've done, I've sawn the uh, spindly bits down to about one inch, one and a quarter inch, and I've thrown them over here uh, to be heaped up for the time being, that sort of thickness, and I'm going to make one heap like this between every, you know, for, between these trees in this row, uh, for every three or four that I go, so I'll be I've done that one, I'll be doing this one later. Um, these are all going to be piled up. Later on, Julia and I will work together. We'll work into the back of her estate car. If we can get her open, it, it's uh, the only lasted electronic things, and then put wet weather, it clumps up and won't open. And you know, with, sh with smaller cutting instruments, we'll saw a lot of this down. Would this smaller get thrown away? But wood, uh, down to about, hmm, down to about this sort of thickness, down about as thick as my index finger. Uh, is going to be worth uh, keeping for our uh, stove and of course for um, uh, barbecues and wood burning stuff and this is uh, the prime wood uh, which will be dried and in a year, preferably two years, this will be used to warm our home. So I know by measurement of my cubit, which I can't quite photograph here, but by the measurement of my cubit is just roughly what will go into our, um, our wood burner. So if I was going to cut this one for example, I'd measure it sort of like that, uh, just a handy measure and cut just there knowing that that would be a nice big solid log which when it's had a year, preferably two years to dry out will go into our wood burning stove. We'll store this um, for as long as we can but at the moment I'm leaving it for a lever because what we try and do is dig around these trees and go down and maybe use a, an axe, not my beautiful uh, high quality ground spores Brooks axe but a you know, a cheaper axe that so doesn't mind getting blunted on stones. Uh, you know, dig round here. I put some videos up about this doing this before, and um, cut back as far as we can. Then lever the. Uh, it's handy to have a bit of wood to lever this with. Okay, so what I'll do then, uh, before I start on the next tree, and this is your winter's work. I've got about 60 trees to take down, about 10% of the total. It's all carefully planned. Um, I'll wheelbarrow this over to somewhere it can stay and be stacked up 
and it'll be drying out. Anyway, so a slightly sombre task with removing 60 trees, but I'll, I'll, once we've finished doing that, I'll count how many we've got left. Well, there was a time we had a thousand trees there. We've been reducing the number, but we've been increasing the variety. And um, one thing we're going to do probably next year rather than this year is to um, bring in more varieties. And where we've got, for example, um, a large number of, say, sunset apples, or quite a few Lord Lambourn, various other apples, which are fine apples, but we may have more than we need. I'll buy in some wood from some rarer varieties, some of the varieties like Gravenstein, uh, for example, that's the one I can think of, um, that I haven't got. We've also got a few slips of rare apples growing, Golden Harvey, for example, we've got some very rare Gloucestershire cider apples. We've brought a few what, new ones in, like Fair Maid of Devon, um, Cornish Aromatic, uh, Dunkerton's Early, um, Slack McGirdle and various other uh, unusual apples. So we're hoping to increase the number of varieties. We reckon we've got about 70 varieties now. Um, we'd like to increase that to more than 100. Uh, so we're, we're giving up any idea of trying to make money out of this place. We want to hold on to it and develop it more somewhere we can have friends around for parties and sleepovers and um, sell apples to be made into high quality cider by craft cider makers and as a repository for larger numbers of different apple varieties uh, to support um, helping other people grow these rare apples. Okay, don't forget the book. Uh, it's five dollars, uh, three pounds seventy-five or thereabouts, roughly wherever you are. Um, about the price of, of one and a half pints of beer in the pub is about what it will cost you. Uh, in fact, three seventy-five in England, you'd you, you'd be hard pressed to buy a pint of beer for less than that. So it's about the price of a pint. Okay, the book. And uh, if I make any profits, and I, um, I'm paying for, I'm paying about six hundred pounds for an advert in the Gardener's World magazine, which I'm told is read by a million people. Uh, so obviously any income I get will have to pay back that the cost of that advert, because I don't want to be out of pocket, though I may, I may be. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Any, any profit will go to plant trees in the dry land regions of Africa. If only we could have some of their warmth and they could have some of our rain. Uh, in um, return. Okay, so from the uh, mid-November orchard, uh, there are some constellations of autumn. We may as well enjoy these leaves uh, before they're gone and enjoy our life before we're gone.